As we all know that the Pallava period was a veritable age of art which flourished in different disciplines and this is also true for say music, dance as well as the painting. Now whenever there is a development in a particular discipline, it also has a repercussion on a corresponding development in another discipline. This can be very well demonstrated by the example of the Sittanavasal temple fresco where a fine depiction of danceuses has been depicted in a painting and this shows not only the development in painting but as well as the development in dance uh, as well. Now to start with, in music we have distinct development in the Pallava period. Particularly important was the Tevaram, the spontaneous outpouring of the heart which has been demonstrated in Tevaram which was written, composed by the famous trio Appar, Sundarar and Sambandhar. Particularly Sundarar, he was a noted vocalist himself and he was accompanied by Thiru Nila Kantha Panar who was a expert on Yal that is something like a lute or veena. Together they composed or they uh, sang along with the accompaniment of the instrument in different temples. And these Tevarams very early were sung in different temples. We have references from the late Pallava period that Tiru Padiham was sung in different temples and from Tiru uh, temple inscription we find that from Nandivarman third's time onwards the singers of Tiru Padiham was given land grants and this system continued in the later Chola period as well. Even now every Shiva temple has or um, they have the system of Tevaram being sung though the original tunes in which the uh, meters or the verses were composed may have been forgotten but the system of Tevaram being sung is still continued in all Shiva temples in South India. In the case of the Vaishnava uh, temples, Divya Pravandham uh, particularly in the case of Periya Tirumoli, it could have been sung. But it seems that in case of Divya Pravandham, that is the Vaishnava uh, tradition or the Vaishnava uh, verses, it was or they were uh, possibly recited in Udatta, Anudatta and Swarita Swaram. Now, 
in the context of the king's contribution, we find different virudas, that is cognomen or epithet which was attached in front of the name of the king. There are certain references which can be inferred as their contribution or their uh, participation in the musical field. Particularly important is the cognomen of Mahindra Varman, which is known as Sankirna Jati. Now, Gopinath Rao, who was the epigraphist, uh, he was of opinion that Sankirna Jati normally means born from a mixed caste. Whereas, Krishna Shastri, another epigraphist, he was of the opinion that Shankirna Jati would mean a different type of musical time, that is Tala, which was invented by Mahendra Varman. Now, in a official inscription, it is very difficult to uh, think that one would speak very eloquently about one's uh, questionable birth or the descent that is uh, born of a mixed caste and that is why Simi Nakshi uh, is of the opinion that possibly Krishna Shastri was correct that is uh, Mahendra Varman was the inventor of a different type of musical time that is Sankirna Jati. Now, according to Tala Lakshana, which is the earliest treatise on the Tala, that is musical time by Nandishwara, there are only four types of musical time has been noted, that is Chaturashtra, Tisra, Misra and Khanda. Whereas, there are generally accepted five types of musical notes or musical time of which Sankirna Jati is the latest one and which is not, which is not generally being used. On the basis of this information, Minakshi uh, hypothesizes that possibly Mahendra Varman was the inventor of this latest Tala and that is why this Shankirna Jati was attached as his cognomen. Apart from this Sankirna Jati uh, Viruda, Raja Shimha, his grandson, he also assumes different types of cognomen which gives a glimpse of their attachment to music. For instance, Raja Shimha has the cognomen like Badya Vidyadhara and also Sri Atodya Tumburu. Now, in Amarakosh, Tumburu is proficient in playing Veena. Atodya generally means proficiency in four types of musical instruments of which Veena is one and there are others like Muraja, uh, then that is drum, then Vamsha, uh, flute, uh, etc. <coughs> now, on the basis of Amarakosha's instance that is Tumburu was proficient in playing Veena and here Rajashimha is being equated with Tumburu in his proficiency in playing Veena. Uh, it is assumed or C. Minakshi assumes that Rajashimha was proficient in playing Veena. Apart from the Viduras, there is a very direct evidence of the advancement of music during the Pallava period and here comes the Kudumiyamalai inscription. This is a very uh, significant uh, inscription in the sense that this is directly related with music, this is a musical inscription. The music was inscribed or this inscription was inscribed 
at the very end it is written as Rudracharya Shishyena Parama Maheshwara Shishya Hitartha Krita Swaragama that is the disciple of Rudracharya the king Parameshwara himself is inscribing this note on Swaragama for the benefit of the disciples or students. Now this Kudumiyamalai inscription is divided in seven sections like Madhama Grame Chatush Prahara Swaragama. Like this there are seven types of seven uh, sections each comprising of permutations of four swaras in six subsection, uh, 16 subsections. Now this inscription shows that whoever has uh, done this inscription and Meenakshi assumes that this was done by, this was inscribed by Mahindra Varman himself who had invented this uh, musical notations for the benefit of the uh, students and here he also comes to the conclusion that Mahendra Varman invented these uh, permutations of uh, sounds by experimenting on an instrument that is seven stringed veena which is known as parivadini. In Amarakosha parivadini means uh, an instrument a veena having seven strings and if we go according to uh, Buddha Charit of Ashokosh, uh, it is said that Parivadini is not only seven strings but the strings are made of gold. So he had experimented this music on the uh, on this type of instrument and the result we find in Kudumiya Malai inscription. Regarding the authorship, uh, one can argue that uh, this was directly not done by Mahendra Varman but Paleographically, it is in the 7th century, late 7th century, the time period when Mahendra Varman was ruling. The region from where it was found, it was well under the control of Mahendra Varman himself. And if we take another inscription which is badly mutilated, Mamandur inscription, there another musical inscription, though unfortunately most of the information has been lost because it has been transposed um, on by another inscription. There the inscriber's cognomen is Gunabhara which was the uh, cognomen or epithet of Mahendra Varman. With these uh, informations we can very well say that Pallava period uh, saw veritable improvement in music. Now, this development in music had direct relation with another sister discipline that is dance. Two types of dance can be found or seen in the Tamil country. One is the traditional Kuttu dance or Kuttu form of dance which was the uh, local, uh, local one which was the indigenous dance form and from the Sangam period from the classical literature itself we find different types of Kuttus were prevalent in different parts of the Tamil country. In Silapadigaram another very important text of the classical period, we find that different distinctions have been made in uh, among the Kuttus. We find two main two main types of Kuttus, one is Shanti Kuttu and another is Vinoda Kuttu which is then subdivided into many different types. These are basically group dances and uh, pastoral type of dance prevalent among the pastoral people mainly and this was accompanied by music played in yal yal or 
as I already uh, said that it is a kind of veena or lute and there were different types of lutes being available in different parts of Tamil country along with uh, drum and kulal. Now, what happened to Kuttu? It is not uh, very well uh, demonstrated in uh, different historical informations during the Pallava period. But another type of dance which is generally known as the classical dance based on the Bharata Nakta Shastra, this can be very well demonstrated or the developments in the classical dance can be very well demonstrated from the temple architecture or the temple sculpture, sculptures in the temple architecture. Now, according to Bharata Natya Shastra, there are four different types of Abhinaya. A very important aspect of this uh, Abhinaya is the Angika Abhinaya that is through the movement of the body parts different types of emotions and uh, meanings are being represented to the uh, audience. This was basically done for the benefit of the kings as well as uh, his court which was mainly played in the stage but later we find the same thing being transposed, being taken inside the temple precincts. In the uh, Pallava period, they were uh, believers of the divine origin of the dance and the uh, attachment that they show to Nataraja, the Shiva in the Nataraja form or the Natesha form. This shows that they believed in the divine inspiration or the divine origin of dance. As at the very beginning, I uh, started with uh, um, a fresco, temple fresco at uh, Sittanavasal, that is a uh, Jain uh, monastery. There, the, it is a bust of two dancers or danceuses, and uh, because it is just a bust, there the hand postures can only be demonstrated and according to Bharata Natya Shastra, Hastabhinaya that is expression of uh, different meanings through exposition of the hand poses that becomes very important and in uh, this particular uh, fresco, Sittanavasal fresco, we find that one hand, the right hand is in Gajahasta uh, mode whereas the another left hand is in chatura posture. There are other forms if we look at the leg postures according to the Natya Shastra which is known as uh, Nikuttitam. One that is right leg is firmly implanted on the ground as the left leg the toe is uh, implanted on the ground whereas the heel is uh, a lift which will be later struck on the ground forcefully. This altogether shows that the dance uh, discipline or uh, the discipline of uh, dance in fine arts, it was also advancing fast apace along with the development that was taking place in the field of music. Now, if we come to the painting during the Pallava period, we find that uh, there are several examples of uh, paintings though they are very fragmentary because of the wear and tear. Here, if we take the examples of Mahabalipuram, not all but particularly the Adi Varaha cave in Mahavalipuram, it shows traces of paints which was possibly done during the Pallava period, particularly the Durga image, it has 
paints on it and the ceiling in front of Durga image, it also shows traces of floral designs which has been drawn or painted on the ceiling. Mamandur cave also shows that it was heavily painted with uh, vertical lines of deep red and deep green alternating and in between there were colorless stone panels in between. So, it formed a kind of design or pattern and fragments of these uh, paintings or paints can be seen even now. Here particularly important is the Sittanavasal uh, Jain uh, temple and as we all know that Mahendra Varman was uh, for a time being a Jain uh, disciple who was later converted by the intervention of uh, Nayanar uh, here in the here it is Appar. In Sittanavasal particularly in the sanctum on the ceiling we have already referred that there are uh, two busts of dancers there and not only the hand postures but the coiffer the way the um, hair uh, do has been done or the ornaments that has been depicted with rare craftsmanship also on the right hand of this uh, sanctum portraits of a man and woman has been depicted which Minakshi finds or uh, thinks that was the portrait of Mahendra Varman and his queen. But more important was the depiction of a lotus lake what we find in the on the ceiling and there not only the lotus and the waters but different water animals as well as three Jain ascetics have been depicted of which two are holding a lotus in their hands and another picking the lotus and keeping in a flower basket uh, on um, uh, which is situated on his left side left shoulder. This uh, picture or the other uh, examples that I have already enumerated, it shows that possibly they were using vegetable colors, not very many variations were there, they were using very basic colors like red, yellow, green or black, but the color scheme that they were using, it was very in interesting one, it was very vibrant in its uh, uh, nature and whatever remains are there, it shows that Pallava period saw a very uh, advanced type of painting which if not cannot be compared with the Ajanta uh, paintings, but it had its own, uh, own uh, weight itself. And again the Virudas of the kings, particularly Mahendra Varman shows his attachment to uh, painting. He has a title which is known as Chitrakarapulli. Now Chitrakarapulli means tiger among the painters. So possibly he was also very very proficient in painting and also another cognomen was there uh, among um, his titles that is Dakshina Chitra. Possibly he was an author of a treatise, a text which demonstrated the distinctiveness of the South Indian painting and that is why the name Dakshina Chitra. With all these things we can find that in the Pallava period not only architecture but other disciplines of fine arts particularly music, dance and painting also saw advancement and this uh, even now can uh, make oneself wonder that how they were doing all these things at a very short time of say 200 to 300 years.